What's up, people? I'm Lindsay Geektron, and this is Law King's League Trends for the week of December 16th, 2014, sponsored by the Warlords of Draenor, which is available now online or in stores. Take your place on the front lines, get a free level 90 boost to one of your tunes, and also play the super try-hard meta game by seeing how many more followers you can get to your garrison than your friend Keegan. Okay, maybe that's just my reason. Whatever. This week's featured champions include LeBlanc, Warwick, Kenan, Kogma, Lissandra, and Zed. Let's dive into Summoner's Rift. This week, the champions on the increased pick rates list include LeBlanc, Graves, Aurelia, Lissandra, and Corky. Solo Q is going LeBlancers. The Deceiver is making a comeback thanks to some indirect buffs. Athene's Unholy Grail is no longer omnipresent on opposing mid laners as a source of magic resistance, and most champions are just a tiny bit squishier early game due to the base stat tweaks in the 420 patch. She therefore has an easier time bursting people down. LeBlanc's burst is all about combinations, so a Banshee's Veil is the counter item. Other items that can help you survive are an Abyssal Scepter, Rod of Ages, Hex Drinker, or even a Warmog. LeBlanc is a slippery lane opponent, and there's no real simple strategy to deal with her. Champs like Cinder or Vigor can help hit her with crowd control as she comes in on her distortion dash and deal damage before she can leap back out. If that seems too hard, try using a tanky mid laner such as Orianna, Morgana, or Cho'Gath and aim to survive. Guess that Black Rose is starting to bloom again. Great. Decreased pick rates this week list Kalista up first. Pantheon, Warwick, Lucian, and Master Yi follow up. He's back! We covered the rise of Warwick, and now we're here to see his fall. The damage from his infinite duress ultimate was hit hard last patch, and his favorite toys got nerfed as well. Skirmisher's Saber no longer procs five times during infinite duress, and the Devourer enchantment was lowered from 40 to 25 damage on hit. He's now back to his original role as a set of training wheels for junglers. He still has a healthy clear, so if you're still not comfortable in the new jungle, he's a safe tool to learn it with. He can even jungle without smite, so if you're a new player or leveling a smurf, Warwick's your main. Once you have experience though, you'll probably find other champions more useful and more satisfying to play. The TLDR is that Warwick is probably dead. Apologies to Warwick fans, but most would say good riddance. Champions with the biggest increased win rates this week are Sejuani, Cassiopeia, Kennen, Hecarim, and Swain. Kennen's showing up big after some tweaks to his abilities in the latest patch. His playstyle is the same, so we're going to do more of a general overview. The heart of the Tempest's core item is a Zhonya's Hourglass. His ultimate will still deal damage while he's invulnerable in a way that's similar to Fiddlesticks or Swain. Other good items to rush are a Haunting Guise or Abyssal Scepter. He can make some use of the AD items like a Gunblade or a Bork, but it's usually better just to go AP. He's a ranged top laner with stout poke and auto attack. He has some hybrid scaling, but mostly deals magic damage. His ultimate, Slicing Maelstrom, brings both damage and initiation to teamfights. He's a powerful all-in champion, but is also quite squishy, so players need to use good judgment. His lightning rush is quite the speed up and is usually how Kennen gets into the fray. Avoid using it in lane unless you can see their jungler elsewhere, since it's also your escape. Keep an eye out for this little guy on the Rift. Decreased win rates this week have Warwick up first, with Pantheon, Singed, Kogma, and Lucian rounding out the list. After a strong run in the summer, Kogma's heyday is winding down. He received some minor damage nerfs a while ago, but was still a strong champion against top lane tanks. The game is moving away from these champions and towards diving threats like Aurelia and Lissandra. Additionally, mobile assassins like Fizz and LeBlanc are gaining popularity. To survive today's threats, consider getting a Banshee's Veil or a Guardian Angel as your fourth or even third item. The Mouth of the Abyss deals a lot of damage even with just a Triforce and a Bork, so focus on staying alive. A Last Whisper is actually optional due to his multiple sources of magic damage, so while it may seem redundant, he can buy either a Bloodthirster or a Phantom Dancer for additional lifesteal or movement speed because he didn't hurt enough on his own. At least Reindeer Cogs in season. Champs with the biggest increased ban rates this week include Akali, LeBlanc, Nar, Soraka, and Lissandra. The Ice Witch has popped up in the bans list because of her appearances at IEM San Jose. She's a mobile mage that brings multiple sources of crowd control, so she's very good at controlling melee champions or initiating for her team. 
Her ultimate, Frozen Tomb, can either be used as a stun or in vulnerability for herself. With an additional Zhonya's, she can stall for some time after entering a fight. To counter some of Lissandra's mobility, try and save your CC for her Glacial Pass. She must reactivate the ability to swap places with her claw, so there's a small window to lock her up. Alternatively, try and get a pick. If she has no tank items, a second or two may be all the time you need to kill her since she is quite squishy. Lissandra's actual damage isn't that high, so if you can survive or outplay her initiation, then you'll probably win the team fight. Finally this week, champions with the largest decrease in ban rates has Warwick dropping over 20% from last week. Morgana, Pantheon, Katarina, and Zed follow up. Zed is indirectly benefiting from the rise of other threats. Most of the other champions on the list were directly nerfed, or gutted, in the case of Warwick. Zed, however, is simply enjoying a little time out of the spotlight and in the, well, shadows. Zed's typical core consists of a Bork and a Ghost Blade. They both provide bursting during Zed's ultimate, Death Mark, and improve his split pushing. The attack speed helps kill towers, while the movement speed bonuses can be used to chase or escape. A Guardian Angel is your friend in team fights, since you'll often have to fully commit for kills. To make use of League's quintessential assassin, players need to learn both split pushing and flanking. Simply walking through the front of a team fight and following initiation is probably not going to do much against good opponents. Zed is a ninja after all, so you have to be sneaky. Buy wards and communicate with your team if you're spending time in the side lane. If you need to team fight, Wait until the enemy team commits some abilities before hopping in. And that does it for this week's episode. Please be sure you check back every week for the latest League of Legends picks, bans, and win rates. Please be sure you like and comment below to help us reach more people, but mostly just share this video around to all of your friends, which is the best holiday present that you could ever buy me, ever. You know, if you're wondering. Make sure you subscribe to Lol King's YouTube channel before you go. I'm Lindsay Geektron. You can follow me on Twitch TV at Lindsay Geektron. Thanks everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.